Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Robert and today I want to share with you a couple of storage tips for the Kickstarter version of Skyter Horde and also uh, share with you some quick impressions of the game. I received this um, this week and I played it a bunch uh, and I might shoot a full review of this later uh, but first I want to talk about a couple uh, hacks I did to uh, improve the storage experience and uh, you know deploying the game aspect okay. So one uh, complaint that a lot of people have had is uh, the build of this deluxe edition box and I do have to agree uh, it is a bit um, you know it seemed a bit uh, stronger from the Kickstarter uh, pictures and I do actually like it in concept I just wish it was a bit sturdier uh, but one big flaw is the fact that uh, the magnet is just just isn't strong enough okay and it could uh, the game if, if you store it a certain way or you're not careful the cards and the tokens are gonna uh, fly all over the place all right uh, so one thing I did uh, that is a very simple fix uh, just add a little piece of velcro right there okay uh, and you can then store it any way uh, you want uh, all right uh, so after you put that in there just, you know, I'm gonna have, uh, turn it upside down. See? Pretty sturdy. And now you can store it, uh, you can store it uh, however you want and you're not gonna have to worry about the, the magnet uh, coming off, okay? Uh, and the lid uh, coming off because of the weak magnet. So that's an easy fix. I wish I didn't have to do that, but you know, it's a, it's a easy enough fix. Now, uh, I also wasn't a fan of this row here uh, because even if I add the um, Velcro, I, I feel that the tokens in these rows would uh, fall all over the place, all right? So I added this, uh, I added this uh, pale container that is three quarters of an inch tall and it fits right in there, all right? And, it, and the lid closes, okay? As you can see, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make the lid uh, bulge. So this fits in there and I'm going to share a video where I showed you how you can remove the uh, weekday letters from this and it fits in there neatly. Now when doing this you have to make sure that the uh, the play mat is stored uh, when you roll it that you roll it tightly and it'll it'll fit in there all right and it does fit everything's lift which I really appreciate all right uh, this uh, plastic is a bit flimsy though I do hope that it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, break or anything over time uh, but another thing I did also uh, just so that I don't have to uh, handle the or remove the cards from here, uh, what I do is when building decks, I just pull this box out and put it in front of me uh, with the mat. All right, when I uh, when I set up the game, so uh, this uh, this box just made that a bit easier, so that I can basically put the box aside for the most part. Um, so I just pull this out, the mat and the store and the tokens, and I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, and for dividers, so everything fits lift. I didn't use uh, dividers. Uh, well, I, I didn't print dividers, but what I did is I used KMC hero size sleeves. And what it does is it lets you put a it lets you put a sleeved card inside, and this acts as a very good divider, all right? Because you have the colored cards for this game, and you can see how the colors pop out there. And you can divide everything like that. You can just put a, um, a bulk uh, magic card in, in there. And there we go, you got your dividers, your color-coded dividers. And finally, uh, there is a bit of extra room for the expansions. So I just have this foam in there and I carved a little space for a uh, life tracker for my castle, all right? This is uh, a leftover from uh, when I played Magic. So, it, uh, and this game does, uh, go for the whole Magic the Gathering uh, aspect thing. The, it does have, have similarities, so uh, it's only natural. Uh, so that goes in there really well. Uh, so yeah, and then you put your rule book in there and everything fits neatly. So I am happy that I, uh, that I got the Kickstarter version of this, but um, I do think that a couple of improvements are necessary to make this a bit more smooth. All right, so for some quick impressions, um, let me go ahead and set up uh, a table real quick and I'll discuss that briefly. Okay, so I've played this six times and I've, I've tried different combinations of decks, uh, different outsiders, 
and uh, I've increased the difficulty progressively. And uh, I've already been beaten a couple times, so I love how you know the game does present a challenge after increasing the difficulty. And there's many, many uh, deck combinations and archetypes that I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of. But uh, first things first is I think the f is the fact that uh, I love how simple the rule set is for this game and how quick it sets up. Uh, the rules are, it's very short, and if you, if you have any kind of background playing uh, any trading card game, uh, it, it'll feel intuitive. Now, the rulebook is a bit disorganized. Uh, I think it could be better, uh, for sure, but uh, it wasn't the worst. The information's there, it's just a bit, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not in, organized in the most intuitive way. Uh, and the uh, designers are very active in uh, their Discord server and uh, Board Game Geek answering questions. So I like that, and I've just been having a lot of fun with this. And if you've if you've uh, wanted a game that plays like Magic or Hearthstone, as they as the game uh, claims to do, um, it, it really does a fantastic job of emulating that. It is a tower defense pseudo um, uh, digital card game, Magic: The Gathering, Hearthstone, and it plays fantastic solo. The puzzle is great. Uh, I, th I think that one of the most unique things that this game does that I really uh, like is uh, the fact that you don't draw cards every turn automatically. You have to defeat uh, bad guys to um, in order to draw cards. So every card that you draw is very precious. So you have to manage your cards and use them in the most optimal way. Uh, so I really like that about this game. And uh, there is, uh, just like in, in uh, Marvel Champions or uh, Lord of the Rings where when the enemy is about to attack, it might flip a card to boost its attack. That happens here too. So that way, you know, it's the combat is not 100% deterministic uh, because a card that, you, that gets flipped here might, you know, throw you off, all right? And uh, it really keeps it fresh. Uh, it doesn't keep, it, it prevents the enemy from being super predictable. Um, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail uh, anymore because I do, I think I will shoot a full review of this. Uh, but uh, bottom line, I've been enjoying this a lot. I'm really glad I got it uh, from uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, I do wish the box was a bit sturdier and, I, and that I didn't have to tweak it a bit to make it a bit uh, better. Um, but uh, the, to the tokens are cool. The, uh, the acrylic tokens are cool. Uh, it, game plays great. The rules are super simple. Uh, I'm, I'm in shock at how simple the rules are. Uh, and, you know, they'll improve it over time. It sets up like this and it's just a lot of fun. So uh, a lot of the things that I read before, uh, you know, deciding to kickstart this, uh, it did live up to those descriptions. So I'm really happy with that. And, uh, and I'm, I can't wait for more content for this. Um, uh, just a great, great system. Really, really good job. And I can't wait to see it improve. So those are my uh, quick impressions and, and uh, storage improvements for this. A game I'll probably uh, after I played a whole lot I might do a full review of this uh, but thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions or feedback please type them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one